Welcome to the Unscripted SEO Interview Podcast. Yes, it's 100% unscripted, 100% unrehearsed, even 100% unedited and 100% real. I'm your host, Mark A. Preston. And today's guest is somebody that I first saw speaking on stage, or it must be over 10 years ago now in Liverpool. Um, I think he was speaking alongside the founder of uh, Innocent Smoothie Drinks at the yes. event. Yes, yes, yep. yes, yes. Um, yep. He's the founder of Mog Media, an enterprise SEO agency, and Barbados SEO Conference, which is dedicated to advanced SEO. Please welcome Martin McDonald. Hi, Martin. Hello, 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 hello. How are you doing? Thank you very much for the lovely introduction. Um, and... Yeah, that conference in Liverpool, that was, um, uh, I, can't, I can't remember what it was called, but Gary V um, went on to headline it the following year. Um, and, uh, and whatever happened to him in the, in the intervening 10 years since then? Um, yeah, no one ever heard from him again, did they? Yeah. Anyway, how are you doing, Mark? How are you doing? Very well. I'm going to say just for the people listening and watching this, that doesn't understand the background and how long you've been mm -hmm. in the industry. Please, could you give a, a whirlwind tour of Absolutely. the history of your yeah your story? Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So um, so I guess the story started probably in the mid-90s. We're gonna go back that far, um, where I was just a teenager in school. Uh, the internet was a brand new thing. I had been running BBSs um basically from my bedroom prior to that. And um, there was someone else that I knew um, whose name was Jason. He was, he was oh, good, I don't know, five or 10 years older than me. Uh, but he had started a computer company selling uh, just PCs back in the 90s. Um, this is in southern Spain where I grew up. Um, and um, he was starting an internet service provider. I had plenty of experience with networking and so on and so forth. He hired me. It was me and him started that company up. That would have been 96, um, started building websites, 96, 97. In about 2001, I was, um, uh, the online gambling industry was just kind of getting started and it was uh, it was getting really big. All the big gaming companies were IPOing for billions of dollars. Um, and I thought to myself, hey, you can program. Why not put together a, a, a little uh, poker room? Um, so I, I did that. And then after I'd spent the oh, best part of a year building that business up, um, Google decided that they were going to ban all gambling paid search advertising. This was, I think it was April 2001 or something, so 22 years ago now. Um, and from that point onwards, all I ever did was SEO um, because everything that I had at that point in time, um, like uh, all of my assets were rolled into this company and the entire marketing plan was based on a combination of, at that point in time, SEO and PPC, um, but primarily paid search, um, and because SEO was basically a black box to everyone. So um, so I, uh, I was active on things like gaming forums. Uh, when I say gaming forums, I mean like gaming webmaster forums, uh, the GPWA that was around at that point in time, uh, the early internet forums, things like Creator Site and things like that, uh, Digital Point. I was active on all of those 20 plus years ago. And this is this is fundamentally before SEO had a name, basically. Um, and uh, and I didn't realize it at the time, but I became a full time SEO going back to 2001. Um, since then, I've uh, I, I've worked in the, the, the poker and the casino industry for seven, eight years. I worked in ticketing for four or five Um I've uh, worked in travel um, for seven or eight. Uh, and I've, I've been running my own consultancy now for six years which is remarkable saying it out loud um, because I never, like it, it was kind of accidental. It was never part of my life plan to, to start an enterprise SEO agency. But after my experience of being in-house for about 15 years, it seemed the, it seemed the natural progression. Yeah. So like your background's predominantly in the enterprise SEO space. Why, yeah. why enterprise? But do you know what? It was... Um, being a bit self-analytical here, 
the reason that I wanted to focus on enterprise was that, um, again, going back to that 90s thing, I left school really early. I left school with some GCSEs, don't don't have an AA levels. Um, so I've, I've got the American equivalent of a uh, of a high school diploma, um, and that's it. Like, no no college, no university, no further education at all. Um, and um, and that was because I was massively into computers and, and grew up kind of very uh, working class, and uh, we would have had to pay for university because I, I grew up in Spain, and... Uh, I didn't qualify for Spanish university at that point. I didn't qualify for British university. So I was paying wherever I went. In the end, I ended up leaving. That honestly, and I, I can say this now that I'm deep into my 40s, uh, left me with a bit of a chip on my shoulder throughout my 20s and frankly, the first half of my 30s. And um, I decided in my late 20s after I'd been, at that point, I'd been working in SEO in the gambling side of things for seven, eight years. But it's not what you could call corporate, right? Because it was, I mean, it was a company that I set up myself and it became very big. Um, but it was, you know, it was it was fundamentally an extension of affiliate sites that I'd built in the early 2000s. Like that was, that was what it was. And um, in about 2007, 2008, 2009, I decided that I wanted to, to see if I could make it in the corporate world. Um, and that was what got me started on that particular path, which I did for... Um, about 11 years something like that um uh before before moving into this world um and I, i'm very grateful for the experience that i had because um you know for my for my previous employer it was i mean it was literally it was hundreds of concurrent projects going on simultaneously billions of dollars in global revenue attributed through organic search um uh, dozens of teams dozens and dozens of team members it was it was done at such a scale that um, that I really learned learned a lot about how scaled business should work in an environment where it was working and was winning, and that has given me a fantastic ability to to essentially operate as a consultant to other large enterprises because it's fairly easy for me to see the deficiencies in their processes, um, and combine that with with a lifelong passion for technical SEO and frankly for computers. I mean, like, I, like I, I say, yeah, I'm into technical SEO. The reality is if I could have found a job in the late nineties that involved me just sat playing computer games all day, I would have done that, but that wasn't a career path at that point in time. So I found SEO and that's like the next best thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I'm going to say, weren't we all playing computer games? Yeah, it was. Uh, well, I'm, I've, I've got my turtle shirt on today, but yesterday I had on my Commodore Amiga shirt. That was, you know. That was... Oh wow! Well, yeah, them were the days. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to say, when you're working with enterprise companies and you're working hmm. with this massive budget, well, do you think if you've got a large enough budget, anything's possible, or you know, does does budget actually have a direct impact in what is possible and the impact i mean it, it definitely has a, a direct impact into what's possible but it has more of an impact into the scale of things that are possible rather than the success of those individual things so you know let's let's say for instance you are let's just say for argument's sake head of seo a brand like expedia uh you have access to dozens of writers you have access to as many programmers as you could possibly want to build anything you could possibly want. You have as much access to, um, I don't know, when, when I was in a role similar to that, I signed off the sponsorship of travel TV se series. Like, I mean, the, the, there's the, the level of stuff that you can do when you get to that level of budget is just phenomenal. However, if they're all shit ideas, you're not going to get great output out of them. And, and frankly, you know, you lightning will hit every now and then as it just as it does. But the reality is you can cast a much, much, much wider net if you've got the processes sorted out and you've got the kind of enterprise budgets that, that enterprise companies um, enjoy. So it affects the amount of work you can do, but not necessarily the quality. And the quality then in our world, obviously, is what defines whether or not something goes well. Now, um, those two things don't always align because there's there's like breakthrough ideas that require very little effort and always do well. And a good example of this that I've talked about quite a few times at, at other conferences and things has been um, something that we used to do back in orbits when I was working there was um, we had a, a national uh, barbecue championship every year. It was so predictable. And about May, April, May, every year we started this and we picked 20 towns and cities around the U.S., 
basically at random, um, but they had to have above X population and below X population. We had some criteria, but we, we shortlisted 20 towns or cities, contacted them all and said, uh, so uh, we understand that uh, your town is one of the top 20 cities or towns in the US for barbecue food. Um, we've put you into the, the, the national barbecue championships and uh, this is who you're going to be up against. Here's the other 20. And every year, probably 12 or 14 of these towns and cities really took it to heart. Like um, their town halls and, and uh, tourist agencies or whatever were distributing it around every one of the local businesses. They were all retweeting it for us. They were all posting it. They were taking part. They were marketing. Because once you like, and this is, it's a crazy simple idea. And we did it every year for the different 20 cities and it worked every bloody year. It was low effort and it just ran itself. Um, so, so that's a good one. But those ideas are few and far between. I mean, you know, you might do you might do 30 of them and one comes off really well. If you don't have an enterprise budget, you might go bust before you've done 30 of them. There is your problem. Um, so, you know. Yeah. So working with these big brands over the years, mm. how much has brand, you know, the, the quality and the authority and the trustworthiness of the brand itself has a direct impact on what is achievable on for organic. Yeah, I think, I mean, the, the two things are inextricably linked. Um, and basically, once you have got a defensible, oh, what's the term that everyone in the industry, moat, everyone used to say, oh, build a moat, build a moat around your rankings, whatever. Fundamentally, brand traffic is that. And um, and once you have reached a market penetration level of brand traffic, that isn't going away. And frankly, you can turn everything else off. And I've I have looked at I have looked at countless enterprise SEO keyword sets where they're like 95% branded. And frankly, they're fine with that because they have enough traffic coming into their website. They don't care about it. And and you know what? In those in those scenarios, um, all very well and good to them, but I think it's a I think it's a terrible idea. Obviously, as an SEO, I think people that are just relying on brand are missing out on a large piece of the pie. So I don't think they should be doing. But the reality is many of the large enterprise corporations out there do think that way and do simply rely on it. So so we, you know, we we have opportunity as SEOs there to perhaps rank other sites for those terms. Um, and that is the beauty of the internet as it sits. Um, but there is also a direct correlation, even though many of these enterprise um, companies, frankly, don't care about ranking for all of the non-brand stuff. There is a direct correlation between a large enterprise and having a large amount of page rank pointing at the website and having a large amount of ability to rank for things. Ability being the important word in that sentence, because they may not have the interest or the aptitude, but they have the capability of ranking based on the fact that they have the authority built up in Google. Um, and, and do you know what? If you were to think of like a Venn diagram of the best possible opportunity, the best po possible opportunity that you will get as an SEO is large enterprise customer or large enterprise employer, tens of years, 20 plus years of history, never had an SEO penalty, never really focused on SEO, doesn't publish very much, frankly, only has kind of branded search because it doesn't publish very much. That is the sweet spot for incredible growth. And the few times that I've been in that, um, like if, if you were a Mog Media client, you would receive our cred deck. And one of them is something like, I don't know, 7,000% uplift for a publisher that existed for 20 years. And it was simply because they were they had done a spectacularly crap job of publishing their content. Um, so we went in and fixed four or five things. And, you know, they went from, hundreds to tens of thousands of visits, frankly, overnight. It took a couple of months. But the point is, that's the sweet spot where you get the absolute most amount of growth. Um, and, and you know, maybe I'm selfish. Maybe I decided that that was an easier career path than, than you know, scrabbling around for 30% improvements on a thousand visits a month. I, I Not that there's anything wrong with that. I did that for 10 years first as well. But it's easier doing the enterprise stuff if, as long as you can get shit done. Um, that's the only difference. There is no difference between enterprise SEO and non-enterprise SEO other than how do you effectively execute at scale? That's the question. Right. 
oh my god i love what you said there there's no difference it's just the scalability of things mm. that you can do so say for instance you're, you're say a head of seo for this big national well multinational brand and you've got an idea how do you then get buy-in from the c-suite to actually get you to you know theoretically test your idea uh credibility so literally everything can be boiled down to that one word uh everything can get rolled into it but <clears throat> excuse me forecasting results delivering on those results demonstrably being able to be dependable for those results not coming up with um you know pie in the sky ideas that uh, a ton of effort goes into focusing your messaging correctly i mean there's, there's been so much experience that i've had over the years of, of sitting in um frankly in in c-suites that i had no business being in given you know the level of education that i have and who i am and so on and so forth but i did you know i learned a lot i saw people being um not in the world of seo across across other channels so these would have been like um you know morning channel meetings that the c-suite were involved in and um and other channel owners being you know absolutely destroyed for coming forward with with some new proposal to move the needle by a quarter of a percent type thing so you know you learn oh, okay you need to you need to be demonstrably aiming for stuff that's going to move the needle and then i've seen other people burn their careers by you know pitching something to a 30 billion dollar business that it would increase their revenue by 15 billion dollars and I'm like, I mean, that that's just this is a this is a, a whatever a hundred year old massive business. Nothing is going to move their needle that far in that amount of time. Um, so you know, pitching correct, but then delivering on results, and you can't do that unless you've got a certain amount of experience. Um, but once you have done it and you've developed a dependable relationship with the powers that be, then you get the credibility to be able to access budget. You rinse and repeat many times over. Um. The other side of the equation, though, of course, is that that's just the how do you get the buy in and the sign off from the people above you to be able to do stuff. The next part of the equation is how do you get the the, the other people to actually do the stuff as well. Um, and one of the one of the big challenges really has been um, the translation of SEO speak into dev speak or product speak, if you like, um, and the the demonstration of uh, utility of application, i.e. Hey guys, I want you to build this feature that is going to crawl the site and look for pages that have got less than X amount of backlinks and they've got more than X amount of content and they've got less than X amount of average ranking on average. That was an internal linking tool that we we built years ago at Orbits again, or it might have been Expedia. Um, I want you to build this, but here is what it's going to do. Here is what the impact is going to be. Here's how we're going to measure it. And this is how long it's going to take for that impact to be measured. And then keeping all of those teams in the loop afterwards and, you know, uh, walking around and giving the, the high fives and the pat on the backs for, you know, job well done and so on and so forth. Ultimately, as a long-term developer myself, I understand that, frankly, part of the difficulty in these jobs that makes it, um, you know, less interesting is that a lot of the time you, you feel that you've, you've got no real um, visibility into the impact or indeed ownership over the impact. So... If you can, if you can finagle yourself to one, being able to get the buy-in, and two, then being able to get the effort that goes in afterwards, you can navigate yourself into a good career. You, of course, need to know what those things should be that you're doing, um, you know, and you need to be experienced in SEO to understand those things. So it's it becomes a more multifaceted um, role, in as much that you are dependent on different soft skills entirely different soft skills to the hard skills of the SEO that you need to be able to do. Um, but it, it can be very rewarding. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm say, so over the years, has having a very technical understanding and background really helped to mold things and really helped for you personally to progress? Yeah, man, absolutely massively. One of the... Um, after going back to the mid nineties, after I um, started the internet service provider with my friend, um, I uh, about three four years into that, I uh, decided at that point that I should probably get a proper job. Um, and I, I actually I went and worked for Shearing Plough in the UK, um, down in Burgess Hill, 
Um, and I was a database administrator. So my role was writing the software that their um, uh, their salespeople out on the street were going into pharmacies up and down the country and taking orders for their products. They'd then get back into their car, connect it to their Ericsson GH788 telephone, um, connect via GPRS at that point in time, and then upload their sales into our mainframe system. And I wrote the software that that pulled that together and then put it into the global shearing system. In order to get qualified for that, they put me through a 12 month course with Oracle um, in, in uh, database administration. Basically I became a, a certified DBA at that point. The things that I learned in that year and bearing in mind that year was three years before Google were founded. Um, the things that I learned in that year absolutely set me up for the following 20 years. And the fact that, and I'll, I'll, you know, I will absolutely hand on heart say, my God, I'm glad I was starting to look at Google back in the days when they had a monthly update. And it was simply just a big database like I was used to working on professionally anyway. So yes, I was, I was very in tune with how Google worked. And because I was lucky enough to start that 20 years ago, I have been lucky enough, therefore, for to be able to have grown up, frankly, in this environment and to have um, increased my personal knowledge level over the last 20 years in line with Google in as much that like if you're starting today I don't know how you learn all this stuff effectively because you know it was going back 15 years ago when we only had one update a month we had a month to work out what had changed you know but in, in this environment you simply can't do that anymore so you get restricted down to you know kind of everyone following best practices and everyone doing the same thing. And, you know, you're never going to stand out once you're in that environment. The old world that we used to live in, where we did have that month to analyze stuff, frankly, was more exciting because if you could find find the hack for that month and implement it, oh my God, the following month would be amazing. Um, you know, but uh, but I guess that happens in every every new industry, right? I'm also very grateful to have grown up in an industry from its infancy that's become very big now. Yeah, I think, um, well, compared to yourself, I started late in 2001. And I think I, I was probably doing SEO for three years before I even heard what SEO was. Absolutely, yeah. But back then, yeah. it was just oh, mm -hmm. incredible. It's, it's the, the ability to drive business. Yeah. You know, and I think the opportunities was... A lot more, probably because there were less people doing it. Mm. Oh, no, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and also, also, like the, I mean, frankly, the spam systems were less, were less diverse at that point in yeah. time. Uh, I mean, I'll give you an example of something that did in about would have been 03 or 04, Um, was I was running the poker site at that point in time, and I, I ran a, um, I was part of what at that point was called the 24H network, which was a Swedish poker, basically. We shared players between us. We signed up our own players. And then, you know, I had whatever. I had about 18,000 real money players on my one. Um, I was, I think, the second largest network, uh, the second largest partner on the network behind their main skin. But there's maybe 100 different poker sites, if you like, that share this. Um, and, um, and part of the marketing agreement was I didn't have to fund uh, bonus codes, basically, up to a certain amount. So consequently, it was whatever it was, it was like $5 a person or something. So I, uh, I I had learned at that point in time, and this wasn't common knowledge. You couldn't just Google this. I had learned that backlinks were important for SEO. And the more links you had pointing at your site, the better the ranking was. Um, so I thought to myself, all right, let's 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 put together a little, um, little campaign here. Uh, I published it in a load of poker forums. I owned the poker forums. Um, so was able to market it out to tens of thousands of players quite quickly, saying you get a $5 bonus code if you can post in this thread five different places on the internet where you've left a link that goes back to my main site. Now, this is before the days of online spam, right? Now, now people, well, it wasn't before the days of online spam. Email spam was a thing. This level of spam had, did not yet exist because it wasn't common knowledge that backlinks were important for ranking. Um, I had literally thousands of people building me links, blog commenting, forum commenting, writing blog posts themselves, starting whole websites to get this $5. Like it was the effort that these people were going into was, was phenomenal. 
Um, I I had to build a database in the back end to, to double verify that I hadn't previously paid out people based on other links that they're then sending me in their application processes. But like, I mean, the, the, the reality was six months later, I was ranking in the top three positions for almost all big money poker terms. Um, and uh, that company was sold in 2007 before I then became a a corporate enterprise SEO, um, you know, but that was, that was the wild west back then. And it was great fun and you could get away with so much, but the reality is, should my site have ranked third for those terms or second for those terms? Absolutely not. Pure spam. Like you know, there's no, no good reason why that could have been determined or defined as a quality site. So has Google got much better? Yes. Um, have I stopped doing this kind of spammy stuff? Yeah, I, I absolutely have. And it's been it's been the best part of a decade now since I've done anything like that. Um, simply because I've found that the ROI in doing things right is better now than the ROI in doing things the hooky way, which it was back then. So, you know, I'm neither I'm neither pro nor anti black hat, if we want to put it that way. Uh, I am pro whatever the easiest method is to get long term dependable. ROI and that dependable thing is the thing that is no longer the case with um the the more interesting and esoteric forms of SEO. That's um a unique way of putting that. <laughs> so, so just you touched upon backlinks there. So mm. content and backlinks, that seems mm -hmm. to be in a nutshell what the SEO industry think SEO is. Yeah. Content and yep. backlinks, but in your experience, what's more important? Um, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, my answer was content is largely irrelevant if you've got enough backlinks. Um, and I said that with pure qualification in as much that I had um, uh, WordPress plugin networks of 100 million backlinks that I could point to any site to get it to rank for anything at that point in time. <laughs> Excuse me. That is no longer the case. Um, so, so consequently, content now has an increasing level of importance. And if you were to plot out over time, over the last, say, 12 or 14 years, uh, I would say that we've gone from a 100% link, 0% content to a probably more than 50% content, less than 50% links uh, basis at this point in time, depending on what the query is. Uh, because if you're looking at queries that frankly have no query volume, no competition, Google is unaware of them, then you can you can rank any piece of content just based on links for that at that point in time. However, if you're looking at the, um, the any keyword that's got any competition whatsoever, you have to have above a minimum level of threshold of quality of content. So it's about thresholds now that didn't simply exist back then. So it is it is both of those items, and um, and and frankly, you know. A lot of people overcomplicate SEO. Um, I, you know, I overcomplicate SEO in many ways, and as much that in my enterprise world of looking at SEO, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of potential things that you can Im improve on any given web page or website. Um, and it's it's about the the selection of those things. Um, I don't know. I'm 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 trailing off here into things that I probably shouldn't talk about. Um, <laughs> I tell, tell you what, I, I last I last one thing that I really want to know is mm. SEOs that have been in the industry say two five years who want to get into the enterprise space. Mm -hmm. What do they need to do in order to well, theoretically move up the ladder into the SEO enterprise space? I think, I think the first thing that they should do is um, not think of it as moving up the ladder. Think of it as moving to a different ladder uh, because moving up the ladder, I think, I think creates an artificial barrier that isn't there. I know a lot of people that are completely useless that have got um, roles in enterprise companies. So, you know, it's not like saying, oh, in order to work for a large enterprise company, you've got to be very good at your job. That's not the case. I have never, I have never found that to be the case. Um, what do they need to do to 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 actually move into that role? Now that is a different question because it goes back to what I was saying earlier about um, 
you need to be cognizant of your soft skills, your communication abilities, very, very, very importantly, your written abilities. That's something that, um, I sound like an old man here. Uh, that's something that I feel uh, is worse now than it was maybe when I was starting my career. Uh, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Um, but that's the fundamental difference because you're moving from an environment where you don't need to depend on those to execute. You're moving into an environment where you are, you yourself are not able to execute the things that need to be done. You must leverage other people to do these. If you cannot therefore incentivize these other people to do those things happily, productively, and efficiently, then it will not reflect well on yourself. Um, you know, ultimately, you are being measured by other people's effort as to what it is that you directed them to do. So you need to you need to get both of those things right. Um, so whilst I say the SEO portion of it is exactly the same, your input is entirely different between those two things. So in order to transition from, let's say, for instance, you know, and in and, and no way am I diminishing it. Again, I've done it for years myself. Say you are a single person company, you run a couple of affiliate websites in different niches, and you want to go and work for a, a Microsoft or whatever, a big corporate company. That That is the main difference, is you are no longer going to be the person doing all of these things. Other people are going to be doing it. And your risk to reward ratio naturally has to be different as well. Um, it's kind of two ways of looking at that. You can get away with more on a corporate website. Um, but if you're doing anything that's even, you know, remotely kind of SEO dodgy and, and you get caught, expect to get fired for it immediately, which wouldn't happen if it was on your own affiliate site. So, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives in both directions. But fundamentally as someone that's done it on both sides i would not think of moving from a non-enterprise company to an enterprise company as moving up the ladder i would think of it as moving to a different ladder um you can go up either ladder and you can um you can reach incredible heights on both ladders they're just very different ladders wonderful now has uh, promptly being an enterprise SEO allowed you to open doors, say, to, speaking on at conferences, you know, has yeah. that state yeah. to say, well, you know, I'm the head of SEO at this brand that everyone knows about that. It, it, has that status allowed you to open doors you want to normally open? Absolutely. Absolutely, a hundred percent, one hundred percent. So, um, I got started speaking because we did. Um, I used to. Have, I used to be in a group of people where we'd go every Thursday night to. Uh, do you remember Moo.com? Uh, I, I, yeah. I say, do you remember Moo.com? Like they don't exist anymore. Uh, do they exist anymore? I've, <laughs> I've no, I've, I've no idea. Um, so he's checking his uh, checking his other window. So what? The way I got into it was on uh, on like a Thursday night. Yes, it does exist. Um, <laughs> on a Thursday night, Moo.com used to host a, a pizza and digital evening where we'd go around to their offices that were uh, almost directly across the road from the office that I worked in London. Um, and we would, um, we would give like a 10 or 15 minute um, little conference talk to the, the people in the room. Um, and one of the ones that I did was about the May Day update 2007 i think it was so that was 16 years ago now in may unsurprisingly um and will critchlow was one of the other people in the room um and i can't remember if they'd done it was way before search love it was way before uh link love like two three years before them two years before them at least because the following year they did an SEO Pro, which was the, the event that they did that was still co-branded with Moz when Moz used to be an agency as opposed to a software company. Um, and they asked me to speak at that on basically to re redo my May Day presentation from six months previous that Will had seen me doing at uh, at the Moo.com offices. Um, so that was that was how I got in in the first place. That wasn't because of being big brand. But without doubt, if you have got, I don't know, Expedia or Uber or Microsoft or something as your 
working from company in your bio, you are going straight to the top. I, I, I'm sorry to say this, but you are going straight to the top of the pile of potential for every confidence out there, apart from Bedos SEO, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, you are going straight to the top of the pile for speaker submissions because it makes financial sense for the conferences to be able to use your logos on all their marketing material and moving forward. And also human nature. People are going to see that, oh, look, Martin from Expedia is speaking at that conference. That must be good because Expedia have got really good SEO. Like, I, I, that's just the way it works. Yeah. So you have to be exceptional to get away with doing it, not on a big brand basis. And there are plenty of people that have done that over the years, but it is it is much, much harder. Um, however, I, again, like... I don't think that should be the case, which is why with Barbados SEO specifically, just rewinding for a second, uh, I've had three Barbados uh, SEO events so far, a couple of local ones, one international one. Um, those are those are continuing every every year for the international ones, every couple of months for the local ones. Uh, the reason that I did that is because um, I, I wanted to uh, run a conference Basically, I didn't want to travel to conferences anymore, so I wanted everyone to come to me. That's the fundamental reason, <laughs> right? But I also wanted to run a conference that wasn't done like that, that wasn't done like the rest of the ones where, frankly, if you're working for a big brand company, you get to come on stage. Or if you are sponsoring the event, you get to have a you know a, a keynote or an immediately after keynote thing just for a marketing exercise. So what I did... Um, for Barbados SEO, which unfortunately the speaker pitches for Barbados SEO International number two have already finished. So you can't pitch for that, but you can definitely pitch for next year. Uh, anyone out there watching this, please do. All of our pitches were anonymized. Names were removed from them. They were placed into a database. Every one of the members at staff at my agency read through all of them. There was over a hundred in the end and then graded them across a couple of different, uh, couple of different criteria. I then took, and I didn't do this myself, reason being I have a lot of history in the industry. I know a lot of people, people in the industry, a lot of speakers. I never wanted to be accused of, of either nepotism or favoritism or whatever. Uh, so consequently, I um, left it down to the team to blind vote. And we then took our list of speakers from that blind vote. What I found interesting after having done this process for the second time is that experienced speakers naturally kind of rise to the top of this list because they're also better at pitching. So I need to think of some way of kind of diminishing the existing speakers because I'd love this event to be like Brighton has become, right? I love Brighton SEO. Brighton's amazing. But that basically is where new speakers go to cut their teeth. Uh, Barbados SEO is a, it, obviously it's like a destination conference, so it can't be just that, but it should be partially that because what it can't become is the same 12 people that you see in every other conference every year here and tweeting. And that becomes, that becomes a ridiculous echo chamber. So, you know, I was really happy to have about a third of the speakers last year were new. It was the first time they'd spoken to anything. Um, and they were great. There was no discernible difference in, the, the scores of the quality of the speeches between the people that have done 50 conference speeches versus the person that the, the people that had just done their first. So, you know, um, and there's one last thing I'll say on the topic of conference speaking. If you want to do it, go ahead and do it, because honestly, it's the thing that's made the most impact in my career. Um, having visibility out there in the industry is what's got me all my good jobs over my over my life. Uh, I don't know how well it's done for ever getting me any clients, to be honest with you. Like, I, I'm not sure that... I'm not sure that either uh, conferences or social media are great for that. Um, personal references are better for that. But um, but yeah, it's excellent. You should do it. You should embrace it. So with Barbados SEO, hmm. what makes it an advanced SEO conference? Oh, there's the million dollar question. I mean, let me let me turn that around and put it back to you. What's the difference between advanced SEO and regular SEO? Um, well, for me, it's things that you do once you've but for me once you once those, you've those sorted are, the foundation stuff out. But but for me, those first two words in your sentence, 
That's the operative part of that. Because there is no clear definition of what advanced SEO is. Um, you know, advanced SEO to me is is how do I how do I correctly manipulate the internal link graph of an enterprise site to take into consideration anchor texts for ranking keywords outside of the top 10 positions pointing at that page where both the source page and the destination page have got entities that are in common. So therefore I know that that'll work. That to me is advanced SEO. But you know, if you've been doing this for six weeks, then writing a well-crafted meta description is advanced SEO. That's why I find it hard to define any, you know, this is what advanced SEO is. So, so really what the messaging there about Barbados SEO is, is it's advanced SEO in as much that the, the content is intended to cater to practitioners that have been working in SEO for many years, for at least three to five years full-time as SEOs. They know what they're doing. They're, th this isn't a beginner's 101 SEO session. People are not going to travel to a destination and sit for two or three days going through, going through beginner's SEO stuff. Because frankly, if you want to do that, then you're going to do it in the city that you live in, in, in any SEO course. You're coming to a destination to meet the, the, you know, the most successful, the most experienced people within the individual niches within your industry because they're able to go through these more advanced topics with you. Now, what the strict definition of an advanced topic is, purely is in the eye of the beholder. But the opposite is not in my mind. Like, I think it's, you can clearly define what a, a non-advanced topic is. It's the stuff that you have to know, the building blocks of your understanding as to what SEO is. And by avoiding those topics, that's what makes something an advanced show rather than a non-advanced show. And the way the way that I would define this is, um, I, I don't think, God, I don't know. I'm not sure if he, do SMX advanced and SMX exist anymore? I'm not, I think, I can't remember if they rebranded or just went bust or, or whatever. Not sure. but, but that was kind of the fundamental difference between those two shows was that at SMX, you could go with someone that's been working in SEO for six weeks and get great value out of the show because you've learned a lot. You couldn't do that at SMX Advanced because everything would have been over your head. Um, so it's not about the pre-selection of very advanced topics. It's about making sure that you're removing all of the non-advanced topics. That's the only way that I can think of to cater to being an advanced SEO conference. Right. So, so it, it's not like advanced seo is basically technical seo on steroids oh no absolutely not because that would be i mean that's that's kind of gatekeeping right i am a technical seo however you know i'll give you i'll give you examples uh, uh adam reimer for instance uh so he is one of our speakers at uh bbseo 23 in november november 15th to 17th 2023 get your tickets now at barbadosseo.com uh he's one of the speakers there right and um, I'm incredibly grateful that he made the grade as, and was selected internally. I'm also not surprised uh, because his speech is going to be about creative link building. He is unbelievably good at finding creative angles to then basically get big brands to go viral. Like he's he's phenomenal at it. And I saw him speak. I've only seen him speak once um, at the it was at the advanced search summit washington dc november or december 2019 it was the last trip that i took before covid um and it was the first it was the first seo conference speech in i don't know a decade but i sat there riveted through the whole thing laughing at all of the jokes like just being like oh that's that's absolutely brilliant oh that's fantastic taking notes zero technical seo in that in the slightest so, so no, it's it's absolutely not just technical SEO. As a technical SEO myself, I have to be careful to not be biased towards that specific niche. So it, it may appear that way when I'm talking about it in public, but that's because that's the bit that I love. Yeah. So as an industry, all like to sum up all the conferences out there, search conferences. Mm. What would you personally say mm -hmm. that what's broken? What what as in the conference world? I'm a I've moved out of speaking at marketing events into mm. corporate and business events, basically mm. because I get paid. 
yeah. market, marketing yeah. events don't, don't pay me. So that's what allowed me to move into that space, and I'm doing really well in that space. But as an overall, what I mean, it's it's very tricky uh, mm. conversation, but what you know to get rid of the rep- repetitiveness to get re- you know what what does the conference industry in the search field need to be doing so the i mean i have to be careful in my response here overall because i'm like i don't know if we had this conversation 18 months ago i'd be like right this is shit and that shit and this needs to change and this needs to change now i have to be cognizant of the fact that i you know i am i am technically running my own conference series now as well so i have to answer it in that context um and the things that i have been super strict about us not doing are well one the 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 the, the way that we're handling the, the speaker selection at the moment of being utterly blind and looking at the quality of the content and then looking at how the content runs overall rather than the people and the personalities that's a problem uh, and i i say that as a problem as someone that has massively benefited from it myself over my career because i have been invited to speak at so many conferences simply because They've seen me speaking at another conference, getting up on stage, being all aerated, whatever, and being like, yeah, get that guy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so so no, no content distinction was made in that. I was simply asked because I was an enthusiastic speaker. I don't think that's right. I think, you know, the content is what people are going for, not someone's enthusiasm. But it's human nature to want to do it that way, which is, which is why I pulled myself out of it. So there's that. The other side of it that is fundamentally broken in the seo industry is the sponsorship the paying of speakers slash the paying of expenses of speakers slash the overt salesmanship that most of the conferences literally are let's be honest um i was incredibly lucky that i worked for a number of big brands that were fine with funding me to go out and speak at most of the conferences that I spoke at. If if you go to martinmcdonald.com and then click on the conferences, I've got a list of, I think most of them, because I, I wrote it a couple of years ago. There's like 70 conferences that I've spoken at there. Uh, I've been maybe paid for 15 of those 70, just, just to put it in context, right? But my f- previous employers were fine paying for me to travel the world and go and speak at them all. The reason there are away from that, just just to be perfectly transparent, was it made recruitment easier. So consequently, if I am going around the world and speaking to teams of, you know, or rooms of 150, 500, 1,000 SEOs, whatever it is, there was a measurable impact on how easy it was to recruit in that market afterwards. That is the ROI for a big company. Um, the things that I would change, therefore, are one, Focusing on the content, not on the money. Speakers cannot, if you speakers cannot pay for this themselves, right? I wasn't paying for it, my employer was, but even that was wrong. The the conferences themselves are are getting this content. They're selling the tickets, they're selling the sponsorship. They're a business. You are providing that business with the product that they are selling for free, unless you are getting paid or at least getting your expenses paid for it. Now there is, you know, it's it's a hard ask because I'm 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 producing something that's at a destination. So it's expensive for people to get here. The hotels are expensive, so on and so forth. So like it's it's a harder job for me to put together a price that makes sense for people to get here and come to the show and so on and so forth, which is why, frankly, Barbados SEO will depend on sponsors, but those sponsors are not using the conference as a sales avenue. Right, like that. I, I'm fine with swag being at the conference from these things. Swag's another thing that's irritated the shit out of me for years. That's a whole other, whole other topic. Um, I'm fine with them having swag. Frankly, I'm fine with people from those individual companies speaking, if they have made the grade of the selection. That is the hard and fast criteria. Not you've paid to advertise. Not oh, this dude gets up on stage and he runs around and he, he swears a lot. So he's back. That's me that I'm referencing here. He, he runs around a lot. And he, he swears a lot. So therefore he's an interesting speaker. You know, that that's no good. Um, so it is the content, but I understand why every other conference out there operate the way they do. Mainly Brighton doesn't need to operate that way. Um, 
there are other examples. Um, Advanced Search Summit doesn't need to operate that way. So, so there are examples of conferences that work exactly this way. But most of them don't. Most of them are just advertising vehicles um, that you're paying sometimes a thousand or twelve hundred dollars to go and attend for two or three days. Um, like it's, it's 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 many of them are a waste of time. Um, I mean, I have I have spoken to a few uh, event organizers in the field myself, and mm. off camera, off recording, some of them, not all of them, were saying that basically. We need to get the names on stage that's going to help us sell the tickets. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's true. You're you're fundamentally you're working in a marketplace environment when you've been a conference organizer, right? It's the same as it's the same as you know, in our world, working for, I don't know, an eBay where you're trying to attract both the buyer and the seller. In this case, uh, you have that, but you've got the content producer and the content consumers. It is it is the same thing. But if you if you can if you can manage to create an environment where fundamentally what we're doing here is we are saying to content producers, no, you should produce this content for me for free because of exposure, right? That shit doesn't work online anymore. It still somehow works in the conference industry world. Now, now, in to be absolutely clear, Barbados SEO did not last year pay any of its speakers. We did, however, pay... 100% of the travel expenses, 100% of the hotel expenses, 100% of the uh, expenses on island, that was meals, drinks, all the rest of it, full board in the hotel, transport to and from the, the, the venue, from the hotels and things like that. So so the speakers were out of zero pocket. There was, no, there was no, no money had to go in from the speaker's perspective last year. I am absolutely hoping and expecting that to be the case this year, although that hasn't been... Com- We've got six months before the event at this point in time. Um, our primary sponsor of the event last year was Barbados, uh, the country, their tourism office. Um, and if we enjoy that level of sponsorship again this year, basically 100% of that money went into paying everyone's expenses. It's, it's, not a, it's not intended as a money-making enterprise for me in the slightest. It's intended as... I would like everyone to come here and enjoy the beautiful place that, that I'm lucky enough to call home now and get together for a couple of days of advanced SEO and I don't have to go anywhere. So I'm quite selfish on that basis, but I don't need it to make any money. Um, therefore, my objective again for this year is to attract enough sponsors to simply pay for all of the expenses for the speaker travel and the speaker accommodation. And when we've reached that level, I'm done, I'm finished, that's fine. Doesn't cost me anything. Speakers get to come here for free. And we all get to sit and share ideas for three days. And there's the massive ROI front. Um, so I, I guess, I guess what I should say at this point is, if you're a large company that would like to sponsor Barbados SEO, please go to barbadosseo.com and click on the sponsors link. And it'd be technically perfect. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, the time I run away with is like mad. I know we, you know, this is like a catch up for us. Um, but is there anything we haven't covered already that you feel as though the audience really need to hear? Oh dear me! I mean, <clears throat> here's here's the thing. I could I could launch into about a fifteen or a twenty minute um, uh, diatribe right now about SEO tools um, and the way that SEO tool suites work, but you know what? I'm going to save the audience that one because between between us recording this and it going out, I have no idea when it's going to go out. By the way, how, how are we talking? Days, weeks? So uh, about a week. Publish? About a week, fair enough. Between now and then, uh, I will have launched the software suite that I've been working on for ages. I, I, that's going to have to happen now that I've said it as well. Um, so, so th- I mean, that that is the thing that I would like to talk about most and go on about how the fundamental problem with other, every other SEO tool suite that we've got out there at this point in time is a lack of customizability for enterprise level SEOs in as much that as an industry, we've somehow ended up in this situation where we've been funneled into fixing things that product managers at SEO tools think are important for SEO. But product managers at SEO tools are not full-time SEOs. So like we've ended up in this weird scenario where 
we have a whole generation of SEOs that are just fixing stuff that are in tools that have not been built by people that do this for a living, which is a strange scenario. So, so I've spent five or six years working. Sounds terrible when I say it like that. I've spent five or six years working on a product, which is the opposite of that, um, an SEO crawler um, that is built for professional SEOs, by professional SEOs. Um, and, um, and I hope, I very much hope, will be well received by the industry. Um, but I guess we'll see. I guess by the time this comes out, we'll know whether or not my hope was in vain or not. So this will be an interesting little historical thing to look back I'm on. Sure, I'm sure it will be. Just to um, tap on that, mm. that tool you are launching, mm -hmm. who are the, what's the audience, the user audience of that tool? Just to clarify that. Yeah, yeah. That's, do you know what? It's, it's a great question because, frankly, when, when the tool first started, the user, the user audience was one. It was me. Um, so everything in the tool basically has been built up originally for me to provide SEO services to enterprise customers. Um, it, it then diversified into being uh, a lot of more things as I started hiring people agency side. Uh, and it became even more things when I started wanting to distribute it to the general public. Um, so, so it's moved from being an audience of just one to being the audience intended for this product are full-time professional SEOs and or product managers that are charged and responsible with SEO. The reason that I make a distinction there is I have worked with dozens, dozens and dozens and dozens of companies over the last six years. There are enterprise companies that don't have an SEO team. They have a product team. Um, you know, they have an engineering team and the product or engineering team are the people that are ultimately responsible for SEO. You'd be surprised, but there, there's more enterprise companies out there in that situation then there are enterprise companies that have got a good SEO team. So the solution that I have built, which 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 people watching this may or may not have seen, but I've shown Mark five or 10 minute demo before we had this call in the first place. Um, the solution that I've built is kind of designed to fit into that arena where it is designed for people that have a, a very good knowledge and understanding of SEO so they can go forward with the tools, the tools and recommendations that that provides to effectively generate additional ROI and measure that ROI and report on that ROI. It's those three things that the tool does. Uh, and if you're a project manager or a product manager rather than an SEO, it also helps you by giving you the best stab as to what actually needs to be done to affect change with individual tickets as well. Um, and if you want more details on that, then you should probably go to follow me on Twitter or something, because I've no doubt I'll be going on about it um, ad nauseum moving forward. So at Search Martin on Twitter. Right. So on that basis, I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time to um, away from building your tool and away from your business and away from creating this amazing conference and away from the million other things you, you're doing in the industry to, to spend you're an hour or two with us welcome. chatting about yeah. all this. It's been no, you're... truly amazing. And I just want to finish on, mm -hmm. if the audience can do anything to say thank you to you, what would that be? Oh, wow. Um, do you know what? I I am I am incredibly lucky. Um, I have I have I have an amazing life doing something that I love. So the thing that I would like most for them to do for me, if they want to, is the stuff that we were talking about earlier. Um the 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 just getting yourself out there and signing up to go and speak at conferences, to getting yourself out there and, and publishing content out there. Um, you know, that to me would be the greatest thing. Cause I don't, I don't need them to do anything for me that benefits me at this point in time. I would be happier if they did something that benefits themselves. So to learn from me being this, you know, uneducated, fairly myopic, not good at anything else apart from stuff online person that's managed to go out and travel the world and live all over the world and speak at 60, 70 conferences and, you know, build a couple of businesses and so on and so forth, mainly off the back of being out there and putting myself forward in the SEO world and going to conferences and, and speaking and things like that. So 
the, the one thing that I would like people to do is if they want to do that and they haven't already done it, go ahead and bloody do it. And if you've got any reasons why you, you haven't done it and, and you're like, yeah, but I can't do it because of this, send me a direct message. My Twitter, my Twitter direct messages are open for, for non-follow, but whatever you call it. Um, any, they're open. Anyone can DM me. And you know what? Once a week, on average, maybe once every two weeks, I get a message, something along those lines. And I always, I'm, I'm always getting into these conversations. Um, so, so that would be the thing that I would like people to do for me, would be if they've ever thought about it, apply to speak at a Brighton SEO or a Barbados SEO or a PubCon or a, I was going to say Search Lab, but I don't think that exists anymore. Uh, whatever the new Search Lab is going to be. Get out there and do it. That's what I want you to do for me. Okay. Well, thank you, Martin, for your time and all the best.